Okay, so welcome to this next play, uh, video in the playlist on uh, synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we're going to discuss is cell membrane capacitance and uh, how we can use it uh, to uh, assay vesicle fusion, i.e. how we can use change in membrane capacitance to tell us when a vesicle is actually fused with the plasma membrane. Okay, so cell membrane capacitance and vesicle fusion is the title for this video. So we're going to firstly start off with a discussion of cell membrane capacitance and what capacitance means because it's one of these uh, scourges of medical students, something that they don't really understand properly because they've never studied advanced enough physics. And don't worry, I'm not going to go hugely physics -y or maths -y on you, um, because it's not necessary in order to understand what this means for a cell. We're going to have one equation that's going to be the most basic equation. It's just simply what capacitance actually is. Uh, but we're certainly not going to actually calculate capacitance or anything. Uh, that would require some quite complicated, well, uh, quite lengthy calculus. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, cell membrane capacitance. What is cell membrane capacitance? Well, if we have a cell here, we know that we can establish electrical potential differences across the membrane of a cell. Okay? So we can move ions from one side to the other side to get uh, an overall electrical potential difference across this cell. So what generally happens, we're going to simplify it down so that it's simpler. We're going to pretend that we're just dealing with potassium here, okay? Okay, so we're going to pretend we just have potassium. And effectively what we do to a cell is we move some potassium ions from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment and that is going to cause uh, the extracellular compartment to gain positive charge and therefore to have a higher electrical potential and uh, it's going to cause the intracellular compartment to um, lose some positive charge and therefore get a lower electrical potential. So we're going to get an electrical potential difference across this membrane, right? Um, more complicatedly, of course, you have sodium as well, and then you have to consider the fact that you're going to get sodium movement in, potassium movement out, and overall you move more potassium out than you move sodium in, so you overall have this um, more positive, some positive charge has been moved from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment. But we'll keep it simple and we'll just think about potassium. Okay, so we move some charge from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment. So we will refer to that amount of charge that we've moved as delta Q. Now why am I calling it delta Q? It's basically the the difference in charge, so what we've moved from the inside to the outside, the charge moved, so I will call this the charge moved, right, and actually I'm thinking that maybe delta Q could be uh, interpreted ambiguously, let's get rid of the delta, because there's a risk that you might think that it's the difference in charge, i.e. we've moved, let's say, uh, four potassium ions from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment. That's going to mean that there are four new potassium ions in the extracellular compartment, and it's going to mean we've lost four from this side, so I don't want you to think that by Q I mean eight, i.e. the difference in charge now. Uh, I mean um, the amount of charge we moved, so I mean four. In this case, Q would have been four, okay? Right, so when we move charge across the cell membrane, it is going to produce us an electrical potential difference across that membrane. And it's going to mean that the electrical potential in the extracellular compartment is greater than the electrical potential in the intracellular compartment. Okay, so we can say, what's the voltage from extracellular to intracellular? In fact, actually, we should probably look at the opposite direction to which we usually look. So this is the way we usually, when we talk about electrical potential difference across the membrane, when we talk about a voltage across the cell membrane, we usually mean the voltage from extracellular to intracellular. And what this means is if a little man was standing in the extracellular compartment and measured electrical potential there, 
and then he moved into the intracellular compartment and measured the electrical potential there, how much would it change? So it means this new electrical potential, i.e. in the intracellular compartment, subtract the old electrical potential, i.e. in the extracellular compartment. So this just means the intracellular electrical potential. So this is intracellular electrical potential, intracellular electrical potential, which I'll just abbreviate to EP, and this is the extracellular electrical potential. So that's what we usually mean when we mean the, when we say the membrane voltage. So the membrane voltage or the membrane electrical potential difference. Membrane voltage. Now, in the case of the capacitance formula, it's going to be more convenient to talk about the voltage from the intracellular to the extracellular, i.e. If you have a little man sitting in the intracellular compartment and he moves to the extracellular compartment, uh, then how much has the electrical potential changed from that? So it's the new one, the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment, minus the old one, the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment. So it's just the negative of this one up here. Okay, now why is it more convenient to talk about this way? Because this is the direction we've actually moved charge in. We have moved charge from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment. Right. Okay. Now, if I tell you how much charge we've moved across this membrane, so if I, for instance, tell you that I've moved four potassium ions across the membrane, can you work out the electrical potential difference? Can you work this out? Well, in theory, you should be able to. Now, there's actually a very, very simple way of doing this. Well, it's actually, this is related to this in a very simple way. And let me try and give you some intuition for why. If you were to double the amount of charge you moved, what would you expect to happen? Well, you'd expect the electrical potential difference you build up to be double as well. And indeed, that so it suggests basically that there is a linear relationship. It suggests that the voltage from intracellular to extracellular is equal to some constant times the charge moved, basically. Okay, uh, so this constant then, uh, basically what we decided is, we decided that there should be some linear relationship, but this constant, how on earth would you go about working it out? Now that is the difficult question. That is the question where you would actually have to start doing some serious physics, okay, to actually work out what that constant is. But if you were to know that constant, then you would be in a position to tell me, if I move a certain amount of charge, what voltage that will produce from intracellular to extracellular. So, basically, the reason we've talked about voltage from intracellular to extracellular is that we were talking about charge moved also from intracellular to extracellular. So that's why it's convenient to um, use this one. If we wanted to talk about the voltage from extracellular to intracellular, then we'd have to move talk about the charge moved from extracellular to intracellular. Now, this constant, you might be thinking, is this what capacitance is? Well, slightly more complicated. This is actually equal to 1 over the capacitance. So the capacitance is this constant, but it's the reciprocal of this constant. So in fact, the voltage that you will build up across a cell membrane, if you move a certain amount of charge across that membrane, is going to be that amount of charge divided by some constant, which we call the capacitance. And yes, okay, it looks slightly more complicated than that. In effect, all you're doing is multiplying by a constant. It's still a linear relationship, so don't be confused by the fact that the constant is just uh, in the denominator here. It's still just a simple linear relationship. It hasn't suddenly become hyperbolic, because these are the two variables, not this. For a certain cell, this will be fixed. Okay, so this C, then, is capacitance. So capacitance tells you, it relates, what actual voltage will you get if you move a certain amount of charge. That's all it means, basically. And the membrane will have a certain capacitance, basically. It will have a certain constant associated with it, which will tell you what voltage you will build up across the membrane if you move a certain amount of charge across the membrane. Now, that would be very, very difficult to actually work out what this constant is, unless you were to actually measure it experimentally. Theoretically, uh, to do it theoretically would be uh, require 
Oh, well, um, you'd have to firstly simplify the model down. You'd have to build a simpler mathematical model of it. And again, it would require calculus, basically, quite a bit of calculus. Okay, so what we can now do is we can use capacitance. We can measure capacitance across this membrane. And basically, we can use it as a measure of uh, vesicle fusion. And I will discuss how in the next video.